Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday morning in the a.m., about 4 o'clock. Uh, I've lost some of my lighting. It's a little bit darker, but uh, that doesn't stop the word. Whether you're in prison or free in the middle of a park, free as a bird, uh, birds, hmm, I warned them at uh, the Friday afternoon country open mic that I'm working on a new birdie song. And it's uh, fly away. I can fly away. I close my eyes and I can fly away. New birdie song. I think that's uh, uh, Johnny Winter's brother, the, the keyboard player, wrote that song on one of his old albums. Music. Played music on and off all of my life. Uh, in the Air Force, came out of the Air Force, basically 63 to 73 for 10 years. I made a living at playing music. And now on the other end of the music road, looking back at life, at almost 75 here in May, I will be 75. Um uh, the words or the stories or what you create or write as a songwriter is more important than the music. When we're younger, we get into the power of the music moving uh, the human senses. So you, the decimals, how loud you play it can drive the human senses. But there's times when the term soul music comes up because humanity and spirit soul, one, spirit soul is one. Only the sharp two-edged sword of the word of God can divide asunder joints and marrow, thoughts and intents of the heart, mind, two words, heart, mind, mind, heart, and the spirit soul, which is one but can be divided or looked into with the spirit word light, the light sword. A little vision I had uh, of many visions uh, back in the beginning, 45 years ago at my calling after my salvation at 10. I'll be saved 65 years here on my birthday. Approximately at the age of 10, I confessed the Lord, believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior. But my calling was at the age of 30 where, when I was given a gift by the Lord, and I give him all the credit for it. That time I didn't read well. I could barely read a seventh grade reader aloud publicly. And the uh, Lord has helped me with that. But I had to put some time and energy into it, stumbling through the Word of God. I learned to read the King James Bible before I could read the newspaper, Sports Illustrated, or Reader's Digest. I read King James Bible, so uh, half of it by memory, I, I'm more fluid or uh, read better in a King James than I do my other study Bible, such as Revised Standard 1952. Everybody who is a studier must find a Revised Standard 1952 to uh, 62 or older. Be careful of the new Revised Standard. Uh, not good. It must be 52 to 62 or older. Some 72s are correct. And the correctness is found in Ephesians 1.5. When they take the word adoption out, that is a more correct translation. Ado the word adoption five times in the New Testament needs to be whited out, taken out completely, and a placing, a son, a son, a placing. Either order, main word, placing. You are born of the Spirit and placed by the Lord Jesus Christ according to his will. All right, let's read here in the Gospel of John. I woke up this morning and I began to read there. The ultimate is, this is after the account of the Samaritan woman at the well, and now she's gone into the city to proclaim that she believes she has found the Christ Messiah he told me of all that I had done in my life. Is not this a prophet or the Messiah or the Christ? And in verse 42, 
I believe we're chapter 4, verse 42, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, these are the townspeople, the Samaritan townspeople, saying to the woman that came to them in the town, Now we believe, not because thy, of thy sayings, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, Shua, of the world. And that was the part two. Part one, he came, he was born for this purpose, came into our realm to bear witness or testimony to the truth. Those that are born of the truth and love the truth, hear my words of truth, hear my teachings of truth. That is the Gospel of John 18, 36, and 37 about the issue of what is truth. The Spirit is truth. The Word is truth. Now let's back up to 31. I am reading the Gospel of John, King James 16, 11, chapter 4, verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him or asked him, saying, Master, eat, because they had gone into town to find food and came back and saw him with the Samaritan woman, but she left as they approached. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. What was the Lord's meat to eat? It says so here. Verse 33, Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat or food before us? Jesus saith unto them, My meat to eat is to do, the number one good doing is speaking truth, Gospel of John, 18, 36, and 37, to do the will. Will is found four times in the first chapter of Ephesians. To do the will of him. Him here is the one, L. Elyon Eloah, all singular titles, the one, El Father, first strong and almighty Father, El Father, okay, to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Aha, and what did the Lord say on the cross just before he gave up the ghost and breathed the last human breath? It is finished. He finished his work. The Lord finished his work. Now, the Father through the sent Christ Messiah, the Son, the human body, sowed, and we reap. Why? So the Creator can rejoice over his creation with those that reaped the creation, the reconciliation, Shua salvation. Shua has four-word meaning. Salvation, Redeemer, Deliverer, reconciler. There's the reaping, reconciling. All right? And we read on verse 434, King James. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. Say not yet, there is yet four months, uh, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look. You're to look and to see and to hear. All right? And the hearing is a special hearing of the still small voice in your mind heart. Thought hearing. Hearing thought. There's two words put together along with heart, mind, spirit, soul, hearing thought. Thought hearing. Verse 36. Oh, look. Look on the field. For they are white, ready for harvest. That was the last half of 35, 36. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Now we're talking spiritual here, life eternal. And you learn how to spell eternal the Bernie Bear way, misspelt. Okay, E T E R N capital E, capital L with a dash underneath it for the singular title, first strong and almighty, etern L, the first singular title of God, L Father, eternal. Okay, that both he that soweth, 
That's God through a uh, second manifestation of the likeness of himself, Christ, Messiah. God is Christ, Messiah. God is Christ, the anointing seal. God is the Holy Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit of truth impregnated Mary. The Holy Spirit of truth is the Father. All right, that's another teaching. Uh, back in the middle of 36, unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. The Gospel of John 17, 24. Father, those that you have given me, all the saint sons, all the apostle teachers, all the prophet teachers, all the evangelist teachers, all the shepherd, leader, feeder, elder, deacon, elder teachers, all the saint sons that have eternal life in them, Christ in them, without Christ in you, in you, in the inner man, you are none of his. All those, Lord, may rejoice together that they may be with me where I am and behold my glory together. The Gospel of John 17, 24, but we're reading in 437 as I continue. And here is that saying true, the truth one sower. I added the truth. I capitalize all the letters in one, O-N-E, all in capitals, all in capitals, soweth the one, the truth one, that's God, that's El God, that's Lord God. Where, where's the first time you find Lord God? Uh, that's the new question I'm going to ask the young man. I gave him a 1952 Revised Standard Bible the other day, and he'll be able to answer his second test questions and have a rating of 1,000 or A or A+. Plus. He's in... He's determined to bat 1,000 or stay in the A category. Verse 37, one more time. And herein is that saying true. The truth one soweth and another reapeth. You and I reap by speaking and teaching truth. 38, I send you to reap that wherein ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye enter into their labor. That's like Paul and Apollos. Uh, one sowed, one reaped with teaching, but God gave the increase. So it's God that's number one. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that was the number one teacher, but the number one writer of the New Testament is the Apostle Paul. That's the importance of studying the 13 plus one letters, especially emphasis on the last six. And those last six all end with grace be in the last verse. Find the last six letters of Paul in the New Testament that end with grace be and study them till you're red, blue, white, green, black, red, yellow in the face till you have at least over half of it by memory. Four years, four months, study it. Four years, study it. Those six, that's all you need to get to eternal life. It's the last six letters of Paul by memory and live them. Do one. Number one, good doing. Speak the last six letters of Paul and I guarantee you'll end up standing before the Lord in eternal life. Immortality dwelling in the light. Oh, the beeper has gone off. He stayed with the Samaritans two days. And then he left and went to Galilee. Read this on your own. Pray over it. Read it at least two or three times. Forwards, backwards, in the middle. Remember the, the teach, uh, number three tool, last, middle, first. And then you get the witness and the peace of the Holy Spirit. Number one problem with Christianity is they don't take quiet time after praying. Pray for two minutes, quiet time for two minutes. And Hear what the Holy Spirit says in your heart, mind. Love you. Bye.